Well, praise the Lord, and we say good morning to each and every one. What a wonderful day we have as we uh, begin our worship services here on this Sunday morning, uh, virtually on Zoom. We are thanking the Lord for each and every one that has come to be in this particular service today. Uh, we ask and pray the Lord's blessing on each of us as we worship his name and uh, uh, preach his word, and then that we not be just hearers, but doers also of his word. So let us prepare ourselves in song as we uh, have a song from our mass choir. Uh, the solo is going to be Sister Tiana Books. Oh, how precious is the name of Jesus. Amen.
how precious is the name of Jesus. How precious is his holy name. What a blessing. Thank you so much, Sistiana and Mass Choir, for that wonderful song that gets us started this morning. We want to remember our theme for the year, his dwelling richly in Christ from Colossians uh, 3, uh, verse 16. You know, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Amen. What a wonderful, wonderful thing we have for this year. And let's just remember that as we continue to move along. <clears throat> Let us prepare now for our mission, our vision statement uh, as we uh, prepare uh, to uh, with Vision 2021 and beyond. Our mission of Chantilly Baptist Church is to live God's word spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to all people and provide a welcoming place to make new disciples. That is our mission given by the great commission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And our vision is reaching out to the world with the good news of Jesus Christ. Let us then have a word of invocation and prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share again together once again uh, as we come together, Lord, on this uh, Zoom platform to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask and pray your blessings upon each and every one that has joined in today. We pray for that one that may not know you in the pardon of their sins. They may hear uh, something, Lord, and that you might move your, your Holy Spirit on their hearts, that they might accept and receive you as personal Lord and Savior. We give you thanksgiving and we give you praise. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God, as we continue to uh, uh, move forward, just want to remind you, someone was just saying in the parking lot just before uh, our, our uh, service began, that our evangelism classes will be starting tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. So if you had uh, thought about uh, joining in with us uh, to uh, be trained in evangelism, it's a commitment. It's a commitment of... Uh, uh, of, of uh, two and a half years, uh, you know, uh, of taking these classes. Now, that's not hard because it looks like that's a lot of time, but it's really not. We take three semesters per year, uh, and uh, it, it, it goes really, really fast. But it's also very, very wonderful to be engaged. You have to start at 101, and a new 101 class begins on Monday evening. So if you want to join in, if you've got somebody else that wants to join in, let them know. And it's virtual. It doesn't matter where you are. You can join in and you can uh, 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 be participate in the classes uh, virtually from wherever you are. So we look forward to that on tomorrow evening. And all of our teachers are ready to receive students uh, for uh, uh, these classes as we come together, 101, 104, and 106B. We want to also uh, uh, say that our, our produce uh, giveaway is continuing. We had a wonderful time this past week uh, uh, as we shared together with the, uh, with the with folks in the in the community. Uh, we're looking forward to the next one on the 27th, uh, that Tuesday uh, afternoon at um, at 1:30. Uh, please, uh, if anyone that you know or you or someone else needs uh, some food, please stop by the church. We ask our congregation also if you would continue to provide uh, cereal boxes. Uh, we, would, we would want to please uh, continue to give that out for the kids. Oh, CBC Men's and Women's Day coming up uh, on the 2nd of October, that Sunday during our regular morning service, uh, at 1015. So just log into our regular service and, and the theme and, and uh, will be on that day, living the Christian life from Titus 2, 1 through 8. So join in uh, for Men's and Women's Day virtually on Zoom uh, on the 2nd of October. Uh, we're looking forward to all being engaged. Uh, we also will be having 
the women will be having their uh, virtual tea, virtual tea happening on Saturday, the 8th of October. And uh, that will also be virtual. And uh, Sister uh, Reverend uh, uh, Geraldine Cathcart Nelson will be uh, the speaker for that event. You'll need to register, so uh, register online. It doesn't cost anything, but we want you to register at our website uh, and please participate in our women's uh, virtual tea. It's that time of year again for our uh, um, the uh, uh, annual Shirley O. Nelson Golf Tournament uh, in support of SIMSAC uh, uh, at the Brambleton Golf Club in Loudoun County. Uh, this is our 17th annual that we're co-sponsoring with, uh, with the SIMSAC to uh, support scholarships for students uh, to go to college. So if you want more information, see Deacon Nelson or Deacon Daughtry uh, uh, or indeed uh, uh, Trustee Smith for more information. I want you to sign up and be a part of it. God bless. We're so thankful for all of those. Uh, well, we are uh, certainly inviting folks for our various Bible studies, Sunday school, Wednesday noonday, Thursday evening, and our young adults on Thursday evening, the prayer call for Sisters in Spirit. Uh, and uh, we are thankful for all of you that are supporting uh, all of the ministries here at Chantilly Baptist Church, especially through your giving of tithes and offering. We're uh, offering uh, tithes and offering uh, what uh, uh, allows us to continue to, to operate and to do the things that the Lord has called for us to do. So whether you have actually mailed in your tithes and offering uh, to our uh, post office box or used our, our website for e-giving, uh, we thank you. Or if you walked it into the church and just handed your uh, um, your offering in to the church uh, during our church hours, we're so thankful for each one of you as you have been faithful in doing so. Uh, this morning, we want to ask if Deacon Daughtry uh, would uh, have a word of prayer for uh, Thanksgiving, for our tithes and our offering for this week. We need to unmute the conductor. Thank you so much. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for all the things that you have blessed us with here at Chantilly Baptist Church. Having not been in our church for several years, we have still been able to support the church through our members and our friends. And we recognize this as a true blessing. We recognize that you will have us to give back to you cheerfully, not grudgingly, because all that we have come from the Lord. So it's now time to give a portion of that back to you. Yeah. And we ask your continued blessings as we go forward in this day and in days to come. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we're going to be careful to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. And we pray this prayer in the name of your son, yeah. Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, uh, Deacon Daughtry, for that fervent prayer of thanksgiving for our offertory. Amen. We want to now uh, move toward our, uh, our corporate prayer as we come together with our prayer and meditation uh, and altar call time. We want to take it before the Lord in prayer. So let us turn our hearts toward the throne of God as uh, Reverend Edwards takes us to the throne of grace and uh, there intercede for us as we petition the Lord's blessings and thank him for all that he has done already. We want to lift up all the sick and shut in uh, among us. We want to pray uh, for um, uh, uh, Brother 
uh, uh, Brother Williams, Paul Williams, who uh, had an operation on Friday and things went well. We want to pray for his recovery and uh, all of those that are sick and shut in among us. We want to continue to, to let the Lord know how much we are so thankful for his blessings, his mercy, and his grace. Reverend Edwards, would you please take us to the throne of grace? Good morning, Chantilly Baptist family. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful Sunday morning. We thank you for waking us up yet on another morning. We thank you for giving us another breath to breathe. We thank you for allowing us to come together to worship as we direct our hearts and minds yes. towards you. And Lord, when life feels chaotic, we can expect experience your peace because of what Jesus did on the cross. Yes, Lord. Thank you for making this possible by sending us your son. He has made a way for us to know and experience you. And even when life feels out of control, we can cling to the truth that peace isn't based on our feelings or circumstances, but on your character and faithfulness. Yes. And even when we don't feel at peace, please make your presence known to us. Lord, you remind us that you're in control. Yes. And Lord, continue to give us peace with your strength and comfort, even when the world feels turbulent and unsafe. Lord, protect our hearts and minds from the weight of our feelings and thoughts. Lord, allow us to sense your presence and to live with confidence that you're always nearby and let our life be an example of your peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes. And Lord, allow us to have the heart of forgiveness from one to another and to be a beacon of light in darkness for others to follow your ways as we continue to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Lord, there is so much going on in our country and world. Lord, we pray over the Caribbean islands as they brace for tropical storm Fiona. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray over Great Britain as mm -hmm. they lay their queen, Elizabeth II, to rest on Monday. Yes, yes. Lord, we pray over the senseless gun violence that continues to take lives. Lord, we ask that you bless us as we continue to deal with COVID and monkeypox. Lord, we pray over the injustice, discrimination, and the prejudice we continue to face daily as people of color. Yes. Lord, we pray for the ones who are battling daily with severe illnesses. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray for the ones who are battling addictions. Lord, we pray for our family, friends, and our enemies. Lord, we pray for those who are in the hospital beds receiving care. And Lord, we pray for the ones who are receiving care and the nursing homes. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray for comfort of those families who are mourning the loss of a loved one. And Lord, we pray for the sick and shut in in our church and for your divine healing over them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for Sister Clara Carr. We pray for Brother Preston Pierce. We pray for Sister Alberta Thomas. We pray for Brother Thomas Ross. We pray for Sister Marion Sheck. We pray for our sister Mildred Bostick. We pray for our brother Kenneth Brooks. We pray for our brother Paul Williams. We pray for our brother Everett Corbin. We pray for our sister Karen Thickpin. We pray for our sister Joyce Williams. We pray for our sister Alton Newman. We pray for our sister Anna Lane. We pray for our brother Charles Full of Love. And we pray for our sister Tarana. And Lord, we pray for many others who are sick and shut in around this country. And Lord, we pray for our pastor as he brings forth the word for your people. May it be a word that is uplifting, powerful, and full of your spirit that touches the core of our heart, mind, and body, and soul. We pray that someone will decide to give their life back to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, you said in your word in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Lord, we give you praise and honor for your ways are righteous and faithful. 
Lord, we give you worship for you are holy and just. Lord, we will declare that your love stands firm forever for your loving kindness endures forever. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Edwards, for that fervent prayer for uh, for all of us. And we are we're, we're so thankful to the Lord for hearing the prayers of the righteous. Uh, we give him praise and we give him honor. Let us then prepare ourselves now to hear the scripture read for us. That will be the background text of our textual passage for our sermon this morning. I want to ask if Minister Fair would take us before, uh, would uh, share with us the reading of the scripture from the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verses 1 through 19. Good morning, church. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 19. And it reads, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up, his, lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young man, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, behold, the fire in the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by the horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing. Of his most holy word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Fair, for reading uh, that context. Our text is actually going to come from Hebrews 11, 7 through 19, but this is the background for that verses, that the verses in Hebrews. Praise God. Let us now turn our attention to a wonderful song now that's going to be sung by uh, uh, the, our soloist, is Carla Winbush, and the CBC Sanctuary Choir. Now behold the Lamb. Amen.
now behold the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God, born into sin that I may live again. He's the precious Lamb of God. When I always didn't do right, I went left and he told me to go right. Well, I'm standing right here in the midst of my tears, claiming you to be the Lamb of God. Holy is that Lamb. Thank you for the Lamb of God. You are the Lamb of God. Because of your grace, I can finish this race. sins nearly tore us apart. Well, I'm standing right here in the midst of my tears. I'm claiming you to be the Lamb of God. New life can begin for you washed away, washed away every one of my sins whom the sun set free truly free indeed I'm claiming you to be the Lamb of God Praise God, the precious Lamb of God. What a blessing. Thank you so much, Sister Winbush, for uh, that wonderful, wonderful rendition. Uh, really touched our hearts this morning. As we begin to share together, let us uh, turn our hearts and minds to the Word of God. Uh, we would love to share with you today what the Lord has placed on our hearts to, to share 
And I will take as my textual passage, uh, Hebrews 11, verses 17 through 19. And those words as written in Hebrews reads as so. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from hence also, from whence also he received him in a figure. Amen. Praise the Lord. That is our textual passage for this morning. Uh, and I would that we would use as our subject, faith tested, faith tested. Most gracious and heavenly Father, as we delve into these uh, scripture this morning, Lord, uh, touch our hearts and give us understanding, Lord, give us wisdom, but give us strength that we might obey, uh, Lord, when we come into our tests from day to day. Ask and pray your blessings upon each and every one that is gathered here this morning together. We also ask that you will bless, Lord, someone that might hear. Uh, and, and see this on our, our YouTube channel or uh, that may run across it on the internet, we ask and pray that you will touch their hearts, Lord, that they will understand and see the gospel and receive you as personal Lord and Savior. Now, Lord, we ask you to speak to our hearts for your servants here. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I want to thank uh, Sister Jones for the wonderful uh, um, background we have in this slide. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, it's just uh, gorgeous, and we are thankful for that. She always comes up with these wonderful uh, uh, slides for me to use in my, my sermon, so thank you uh, to our church secretary, Sister Jones, for that. Uh, we want to give an a, a, a extra shout out for all of our AV team also been working very diligently and we're so thankful for their uh, uh, sharing and their skills and their dedication and all of those uh, in the church congregation that are indeed continuing to uh, be a blessing one to the other as we do what the Lord has called for us to do in faith and in uh, uh, truth. Now, we have been uh, doing a series um, uh, which has actually been anchored in Hebrews 11. And we understand as we look, have looked at Hebrews 11, that faith is one of the most important words, the most important concepts, the most uh, important doctrinal concepts in all of the Bible. It's very central to our belief. It's very central to our understanding. And it is the cornerstone of our theology. And as is so well stated in Hebrews 11, verse 6, we see, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. We, we've looked at the first four uh, people that are spoken of in Hebrews chapter 11, which we call the hall of faith. And we've looked at these already and saw that how faith made each one of them do something. And they did something profound. We began by looking at Abel. 
he was moved to do something, which was to worship. Then we looked at Enoch. He was moved to do something, which was to walk with God faithfully. And then Noah, who was moved to do something by faith, and he built an ark. It had never rained. He was on dry ground. No one knew anything about floods, but Noah's faith in the word of God caused him to do something profound. And we're all here today because he was moved by faith to do something. See, and last week we began to look at the faith of Abram. Later, changed uh, the Lord changed his name from Abram to Abraham. And Abraham is the name that we mostly know uh, uh, Abram by. So I, I'd like to continue our look into the faith of Abraham today and see another aspect of faith in the lives of those who really exemplify true faith in their lives. You see, as we look at life in general, we see there are tests, their trials, worries, disappointments, and frustrations. They're all a part of every human life. These things happen. You know, some people say life happens. You know, and, and this is true, not only for uh, 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 non-Christians, but it's true for us as Christians also. We go through the same kinds of things. I mean, just because you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, uh, life doesn't stop happening, right? Uh, so we have to understand that. And we, we don't get a pass on, the, uh, on this issue just because uh, we have become Christians, because all will have to endure this somewhere along uh, life's journey. Everyone, everyone is going to go through some trials and tribulations. Jesus said, be of good cheer because he's overcome the world. Now, last week, we, we talked about Abram's uh, uh, call to faith in three different contexts. We, we said that Abram's call was to faith in, in, in general. And then Abram was called to fruitfulness. Not just to have faith, but to do something with that faith and to be fruitful. And the third point we made last week was Abram's call to divine friendship. We're going to have friendship and fellowship with the Lord God Almighty. We need faith. We need fruitfulness along with our friendship. What a friend we have in Jesus. All, uh, uh, and, and we can take everything to Jesus in prayer. Amen. So faith, fruitfulness, and friendship would be actually severely needed and tested in Abraham's life, as we're going to see today. We tend to kind of read the, the scriptures uh, with kind of a jaded view of things, but, you know, when it happens to us, you know, it gets really real, okay? And we need to see it real in the scripture before we ever get to it, because if you get to it and you haven't seen it really real, then it's going to be hard for you to do that on the fly, okay? So then, uh, you know, when we read the scriptures with respect to Abraham uh, and this test by God, you know, uh, it was to bring out the good that was in Abraham and to give him a tremendous testimony before his contemporaries. And, 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 and as we read it, 
it is applicable to us today. But the manner in which Abraham was tested reveals a deeper and more unique characteristic of what the God of the Hebrews is like and how he operates in history. Because, as it has been so well stated, is his story. History is his story. It's God's story. It is not about me. It's not about you. It's not even about Abraham. It is about Jehovah God and his plan for all mankind. Amen. When we keep that firmly in mind, we'll see that God is able. First of all, let us take a look at the primary specifics of the test that God placed on Abraham's faith. Yes, Abraham had great faith. And the greater your faith is, the more apt the Lord is going to test that faith. Not to break you, but to show you that he is able and he has a plan that he's bringing things forward and that he can take you through. I hope you get that from our, 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 our uh, uh, sermon today. Abraham was, you know, just moving along through life faithfully being obedient to God in the everyday things of life. You know, it sounds familiar, you know, just coming along, getting up in the morning, doing what you normally do, uh, uh, giving God the praise, you know, just uh, reading his word and, and, and praying and, and being confident that the Lord is going to take you through the day. But now God calls Abraham to do the extraordinary, the extraordinary, not the ordinary, but the extraordinary. God does that uh, 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 to his most faithful people. The greater the test means the greater your faith must be. You know, he does that to us sometimes, amen? But it is always for a greater goal. It's for a higher goal. It's for a more uh, uh, extended uh, uh, sort of uh, indication of the greatness and power of God. And we must be ready to step up and handle what the Lord brings forth as a test into our lives. Let's look at how this kind of unfolded in the life of Abraham. If we go back to Genesis chapter 22 and read those first two verses in that chapter, it says, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, behold, here I am. Do we answer to God when he calls us? And he said, take now, what? thy son, thine only son, and just in case you don't know who that is, is Isaac, whom thou lovest. Yes, that one. And get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering, yep, burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Wow. Hearing that, from the Lord. Now, God had made a covenant with Abraham. And he was, it was, God made it clear that he, uh, I, I mean, Abraham and, and Sarah would be the cornerstone of a new nation that would uh, go through the bloodline of their only son, Isaac. You know, they had been barren most of their lives, had no children, and all of a sudden the Lord blessed them. This was reiterated to Abraham 
on several different occasions. And Abraham was confident in this covenant that God made with him. The actual creation of the Hebrew nation, which would be called Israel because it comes through Jacob, whose name was changed by God to Israel, did not come about during the time of Abraham. He never saw it. Sarah never saw it. It came many, several generations after Abraham had passed through Isaac, and then through Jacob, and then through Joseph, and, and, and on into uh, the Egyptian captivity. In fact, after it didn't come into play until after the captivity in Egypt. But captivity in Egypt actually was how God formed the nation, how he made the nation, how he pulled them together. It was all required because it was a part of God's plan. Amen. Now, here on the front end of all of that happening, we know what happened along uh, down the road. But, you know, when you're on the front end of things, you might not understand how this thing is supposed to work. So now the Lord is asking Abraham to offer his only son, Isaac, as a burnt offering to God on Mount Moriah. If you understand that, Abraham was to kill his only son, the son of promise, the son that this nation was going to be built through. Abraham was being tested in his faith. He needed great faith in order to found a great nation. You see, in, 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 if you notice, if you notice, this commandment was only given to Abraham. It wasn't given to Miss Abraham, Sarah. It wasn't given to the son, Isaac, you know, because that would be a non-starter. You know, they would not have had the faith to carry through with what God was asking. It was Abraham that had the faith to do this. You know, if he had talked to Miss Abraham, to Sarah, you know, that, you know, that it, it, it would have probably not set still. She would probably not have set still for it. Uh, that wasn't going to happen. Amen. Not my only son, but Abraham. Abraham trusted God. I, you know, I like. I like the way the Bible talks about the faith of Abraham in this context. You see, after God told Abraham uh, of what he wanted him to do to go and offer his son uh, uh, on Mount Moriah to, to, to go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering, Abraham did not hesitate. Wow. He got up early the next morning to obey the word of the Lord in the very next verse. Huh. I'm going to read that for you. But I want to ask the question first, first to myself and then to you. How many verses would it take for us to obey such a commandment? Yo, uh, yo, we, we will, oh Lord, well, I tell you what, I hear you, but I got to pray about that. You know, I'm, I'll get back with you. Uh, you know, well, get, get, Lord, I got to do some other things first. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we it might be several chapters written between God asking us to do something and us actually doing it. But that is why we're not in Hebrews 11, because this is about people of great faith. You and I wouldn't make the protein. We wouldn't be found in that lineup. Amen. Look at, you know, God said this and told Abraham what to do and where to do it and how to do it. And guess what? It, that was in verse one and two. Guess what verse three says? 
And Abraham rose up early in the morning <laughs> and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and claimed the wood for the burnt offering, obedience, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. There's no hesitation. He got up and he did what the Lord asked him to do early in the morning. We might not be even thinking about it until late that afternoon of the next year. Abraham understood the command that the Lord had given, but he also believed the covenant of God. And he didn't know how God was going to do, uh, fulfill this covenant. Uh, but Abraham was convinced that God would do something miraculous. And the only thing Abraham could figure was that, okay, God has asked me to take my only son, take him to Mount Moriah, sacrifice him as a burnt offering, that is to kill him. So then if God is going to kill him, he must be uh, going to raise him again from the dead. We know this because of two verses of scripture that are attached to what God has said for Abraham to do. In verse 5 of Genesis chapter 22, we see, and Abraham said unto his young men, remember the young men that came with them to help them take the wood and, and all the uh, things that they needed to Mount Moriah? He said to them, abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad Isaac will go yonder on Mount Moriah and worship, worship continuing to, to do that sacrifice is a part of that worship, right? And look at what it says, and come again to you, me and the lad. We're going to worship. We're going to do, I'm going to sacrifice him, but we're both coming back again uh, unto you. you. You see how that reads? Uh, if, if you missed it in Hebrews, it says it very plain, uh, plainly here in Hebrews 11, 19 accounting that God was able to raise him up. That's what Abraham, right? Uh, knew that God was able to raise Isaac up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So uh, we know the story. We know the story of what happened there on that mount. Was Abraham obedient? Absolutely. Now, you got to understand, Isaac was not just a little little boy. He was a teenager. He was a, a strong young man by that time. So we're not only talking about the faith of Abraham. We're also talking about the faith of Isaac because Isaac, you know, said, you know, Dad, here's the wood. There's a fire. I know you got a knife there in your belt somewhere, but you know what? I don't know where the lamb for the offering is. What are we going to offer? And, and Isaac uh, and Abraham said, you know, the Lord is going to provide. And he took Isaac and he laid him on the sticks after he tied him up. And you know the story. God tested Abraham right up to the point where Abraham was about to strike the death blow on Isaac. And the Lord stopped Abraham because he had proven his faithfulness. Then God provided a substitute sacrifice. A ram caught in the thicket by the horns, a ram in the bush. This was indeed the foreshadowing of the gospel that the Son of God, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world would fulfill some 2,000 years later as a substitute sacrifice for you and for me on that very same hill, which would then be called Calvary. God 
God was foreshadowing. He said, this is the covenant. You know, I, you know, Abraham, you got a wonderful son. He's a blessed son, such a lovely son. And I gave him to you. But you know what? He's not good enough to be sacrificed for all mankind. But I got a son. And his name will be called Jesus. And he's good enough to pay the price for all the sins of all mankind. Amen. So let us then look at how God tested the faith of Abraham and began to understand some of the ways that we are tested in our lives, even today. <clears throat> so my first, first point is that our faith is going to be tested. All of these are, are, are tests, right? Our, our faith is going to be tested by Satan. If we look, if we look at Luke 22nd chapter 23rd, uh, th uh, the 31st through 32nd verse, we see uh, this. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, this is Peter, right? Behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen their brethren. We know Peter was the first to get up and preach the gospel at the day of Pentecost. And he strengthened his brethren in the Lord as they began this journey uh, uh, of the New Testament church beginning there at the day of Pentecost. You see, when Satan puts a person through a test, what he's doing is he's trying to bring out the evil in that person, to make them behave in the flesh, not in the spirit. It is interesting to note then that our Lord was tempted by Satan uh, and, and was victorious over the temptations that Satan placed upon him that were designed to try and make Jesus operate in a worldly manner. Satan's goal was to try and make Jesus abandon his mission that God the Father sent him on and to wreck God's great redemptive plan and doom mankind as a whole to hell forever. The stakes were indeed high, but you know, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was up to the task. Satan uses, but Satan uses those same kinds of methods to tempt us today. Satan promised Jesus a lot of things, if Jesus would just follow his suggestions. And su these suggestions that would seem good to most people, amen? Uh, you know, uh, if you listen to Satan, he'll paint it, he'll look so good. I mean, in Adam and Eve in the garden, he painted that fruit so good. Man, you ought to look at that. You know, uh, you know, God is holding back the best fruit in this garden from you. You really, really need to have this. You need to, you need to chomp down on that fruit, Jack. And you know what? Uh, you know, it's going to be all right. Trust me. <laughs> Satan always says, trust me, right? But we got to remember, everything he says is a lie. So you make a deal with him, you're going to lose. Let's look at this temptation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because guess what? The same kind of things happen to us today. Look at Matthew 4, 3. When Jesus had been baptized uh, in the Jordan and came up and went into the wilderness, Satan began to tempt him, right? And look at verse 3. And when the tempter, which is Satan, came to him, Jesus, he said, 
if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Remember, Jesus had been fasting for 40 days and, and 40 nights. He was hungry at that time. And Satan had, had, uh, had said, well, now I know you're weak in this, in this department. So I, I know you're hungry. Uh, and I know that you're the son of God. And I know you got power. So why don't you just turn these stones into bread and I'll give you some, some jam and some peanut butter to go with it. And you can have your PB and J. You see, people still desire pleasures and material goods and power and other worldly things. And, and the devil has suggestions by which he promises to give us so much if we just take his suggestion and do what he asks us to do. I keep using the word suggestion because the devil can't make you do anything as a child of God. He, he can only suggest, and then you have to do it on your own. But remember, the devil is always a liar. Satan promises popularity, and he promises acceptance from our contemporaries, and he promises it if we follow his suggestions. And remember, his promises are always a lie. Look at what he did with Jesus in verse 6 of Matthew 4. And said unto him, Satan says unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written. You want to go to the word, Jesus? It is written that they shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands, they shall bear thee up, lest thou at any time I dash thy foot against a stone. Amen. Satan is suggesting, Jesus, why don't you just jump off the temple? It's going to be all right. Because you know what the word says. I mean, you're the word. You're the logos, right? Satan suggested that Christ could accomplish his divine purposes in life by putting on an extravaganza. Do some tricks. You know, uh, fall off the temple and, and let everybody see, you know, hey, you know, angels, uh, just let me down easy. Satan comes to us with subtle suggestions that will lead us astray if we follow his guidance, if we take his suggestions and act upon them. Satan comes to us with the promises of a painless success if we will but follow his suggestions. Let's go a little bit further and see how Satan continued to tempt Jesus Christ. And he hasn't changed his protocol with us. In Matthew 4, 8 through 9, it says, again, the devil taking him up in an exceeding high mountain and and showed him all of the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, said to Jesus, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. The audacity. Satan was trying to tell Christ that it was unnecessary for him to suffer the ordeals of the cross in order to cause the kingdom of this world to become the kingdom of God. Well, guess what? It's going to be the kingdom of God no matter what. And Jesus is going to carry through with what he was sent here to do. But that doesn't thwart Satan from bothering you or me. Satan comes to us with all kinds of suggestions for shortcuts and substitutes to doing things God's way. I know the Bible said that, but you know what? You can cut a little corner here and do something different. You know, when Satan puts us through a test or a trial, it is always to hurt us, to cause us to fail, to ruin our testimony 
and to try and destroy the cause that God has placed in each one of our lives. God saved you for a purpose. And he has a purpose for your life. He has a plan for your life. And we've got to faithfully execute that plan and do as the Lord has called for us to do. He wants us to, to, to play, uh, uh, Satan wants us to play by our fleshly protocols and whims and not by the word of God, not by the plan of God, not by the power of God and the indwelling Holy Spirit. But you know what? Satan is not the only person that's going to test our faith. Other people will test our faith. Amen? That happens. So let's look at Genesis chapter 20, a couple of chapters before this, and, and verse 2. And Abraham said to Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. Well, you know the, the context of this story. You see, this is the second time that Abraham has told this lie and it got him in trouble. Yo, know, not to mention getting Sarah in trouble, right? He told this lie in Egypt back in chapter 11 of Genesis. And he tells it again here in Genesis 20. What was the lie? The lie that Abraham told these folks, the powers that be in Egypt, of Pharaoh and uh, the king Abimelech, was that Sarah was his sister and not his wife. He did that because Sarah was a really beautiful, beautiful woman. You know, some would say she was a real 10, if not an 11, right? And Abraham figured that when people saw her beauty, that somebody was going to kill him just so that they could have his wife. The lie was so that he could protect himself, not Sarah. You say, oh no, not Abraham. I know he wouldn't do something like that. Yep, the same Abraham we're talking about in chapter 11 of, of, of Hebrews, the same one we're talking about in Genesis 22 that got up early in the morning, that same one. And guess what? It can be true in your life too, right? He was selfish in this context. You see, people will test your faith whether you believe and trust the Lord. Abraham had forgotten the promise of God to make both he and Sarah to found a great nation. He had a little lapse there uh, for, for a moment for his selfish reason. But people will put what you say you believe, they'll put it to the test. And God is faithful. You see, here's what happened. He told the king that this is my sister and not my wife. So the king sent for Sarah to take her as his wife. Same thing happened back in Pharaoh, back in Egypt. He brought her in. But the Lord intervened and said to Abimelech, man, you better not touch that lady or I'm going to destroy this whole place. Now, he had to go back to Abraham and said, man, why are you lying to me? Yo, you could have, we could have all been in a lot of trouble here because I didn't know that that was the case. You lied. See, one of our highest facilities with which we are endowed is the capacity to make judgments, be they correct judgments or wrong judgments. See, a variety of tests are uh, used to, to, to utilize, to eliminate the incompetent and the counterfeit. You know, some methods of testing are used and, and, and we can, uh, or we can be destroyed uh, by people who would deceive us. You know, that's why we have board exams. You know, after 
you go to medical school and get your medical degree and or law school and get your jurisprudence degree, you still got to pass the boards in order to practice medicine or law because they want to make sure that you learned everything you were supposed to learn in medical school and law school before you start practicing on somebody else. See, there are also a variety of tests are given uh, to discover the capable and to reveal the genuine articles in our lives. There are a variety of tests are used to evaluate progress toward a desired goal in training or in uh, uh, the struggle of life. A variety of tests are applied to develop character and leadership potential. That's what God is doing in Abraham's life. These are used in, in the business world even today. And they're also used in the spiritual realm. God uses them. God uses tests to help us discover our weaknesses and to strengthen our faith. That's why I want to go to my last point that we need to discuss here. Not only will Satan test you and other people test you, but God is going to test you. Amen? Uh, let's look. This is, should be Genesis 22, 1 through 2, not 20. Okay? And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. And said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering unto me upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. You see, God uses people in whom he can depend on, and he knows us, and he knows our capabilities. For a human, from a human standpoint, God uses people with whom he can trust, with the riches of the gifts and, 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 and those things that have been bestowed and will be bestowed through the Spirit of God for the good of themselves and the good of others, but more importantly, for the kingdom of God and what God wants to do in our lives. You see, God may not immediately reveal his purposes for testing us, but we can be assured that he has their best interest at heart. You see, the tests that come from God are uh, uh, indeed designed by his love for us. They are designed around his love for us. Look at what it says in James 1, 2 through 4. My, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, trials, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. You see, a test that comes from God is a vote of divine confidence in us as believers and is motivated by his love for us as he seeks to build Christian character within us. If you're being tried greatly as a, as a child of God, it means that the Lord knows that your faith is also great. The tests that come from God are never beyond then our power to conquer with his divine help. We can accomplish whatever God places for us to do. We can accomplish it through God's help. That's why uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 tells us, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way 
to escape that you may be able to bear it. He's not going to ask you to do something that he knows you can't do. Therefore, if we don't do the, doesn't, don't pass the test that he places us on, it's not that the test was too heavy. It was that our faith was not there because God is faithful. He's not going to put more on you than you can bear. So when God leads us into a difficult spot, he always promises that one, he will be there. He will be there with us and his power will assist us. And if we will but trust him and be faithful to him, then everything else is going to be all right. The tests that come from God enable us to live more abundantly and to serve more effectively. Abraham became a greater man because he was faithful to God when God put him to the test to sacrifice his only son. Abraham would not have been able to endure this particular test of sacrificing his son Isaac earlier in his life. God knew exactly when he was ready to take this test. Abraham was up to the test at the time that God uh, called him to do what he called him to do. We've got to be ready. We've got to be getting ready. We've got to be constantly aware that we need to be walking closer and closer to God each and every day. The tests that come from God then are uh, speak powerfully to people who will listen to the Lord's voice and not only listen to the Lord's voice, but to obey the Lord's voice. In Sunday school, we're talking about obedience over and over and over again. And in this whole unit, we've got to hear it and we've got to obey it. You know, God is faithful. God is dependable. And we can trust him to be with us in every single trial and tribulation that we go through. Not only is God faithful, God is gracious and God is merciful. And every test is designed to bring out the good in us, to strengthen our faith and to give us what we need in our lives. These tests reveal that God requires our very best and discloses uh, the strength of our faith. God is in the business of revealing and these tests reveal that God has a redemptive purpose for us in, in everything. And he wants for us to be a blessing uh, to others. You see, this test, this test with which God put Abraham through reveals that God wants our best. He deserves our best and always is near to us with the purposes of love with that we are facing when we're facing these tests. The excellence, the experience of Abraham reveals that God is the great giver and that we cannot outgive God. He just asked us to do his holy will. You know, when he had Abraham to go to Moriah and offer his only begotten son there on that mountain, it turned out to be the same hill that would later be called Calvary. And, 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 and there was a sacrifice that occurred uh, uh, 2,000 years later. And, and the man that was sacrificed was a son. Uh, God gave his only begotten son to be crucified on Calvary's cross on that very hill that I, Isaac was taken by Abraham. But Abraham's son wasn't good enough to, to, to suffer for the, the sins of all mankind. But God's only begotten son uh, was able to be able to, to die and to satisfy the sins of all mankind. When Abraham was uh, uh, sacrificing Isaac, God stopped him and gave a substitute ram uh, so that he could sacrifice the ram uh, so he would not suffer uh, to kill his only begotten son. But God, the father, gave his only begotten son. He didn't put another ram in his place. 
but he is the lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Jesus Christ died and as they strung him up, as they nailed him to the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. The love of God was shown there on Calvary's cross and he got up on Thursday, that third day morning with all power in heaven and earth in his hands and he is our propitiation and he is our intercessor. He is the one that is our advocate before a holy God and he makes intercession for us even right now. And that's why we trust him. That's why we believe him. That's why we go right along and do what the Lord would have us to do more tomorrow than we did yesterday. When God comes to test us, let uh, us trust him. Let us obey him no matter what. And I would close with this final word from Hebrews 2, 18. For in that he himself had suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. When you're tempted, remember, Jesus was tempted a lot more than you were. He understands the trials and tribulations of life, and he will deliver and bring you through whatever test the Lord makes on you, and you will be a better Christian because of it. Amen. So I ask you today, have you put your trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you trusting him day to day? Have you ever accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior by faith? You should do that today if you have not. Accept uh, by a simple prayer. Lord, God, I ask and pray that you will, Lord, give unto me eternal life. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that I'm a sinner and I accept his forgiveness for my sins through his blood. And I will, Lord, allow you to be on the throne of my life and I will trust and depend upon you until the time of the end when we will all be with you. If you can pray a simple prayer, uh, uh, just asking the Lord to be your Lord and Savior. If you've done that, put your name in the chat box and some contact information that we might know uh, how to contact you, pray with you, and to also uh, uh, make sure that you uh, grow or join in with a Bible teaching, Bible preaching church. We would love for you to be a part of Chantilly Baptist Church. You can become a virtual member. You can become a, a physical member. If you're here in this area, we'd love to have you. God bless you today, and we ask and pray the Lord's blessings continually on each and every one of you as we uh, go forward. So praise God, let us then prepare ourselves now as we uh, prepare to share together in our Holy Communion for today.